So, see this interesting uh, thing in this uh, circuit, this is nothing but equivalent of a this, this particular part is nothing but like a series resistor uh, which is essentially the RDS right which I mentioned to you. Essentially in any voltage regulator it is like uh, if you are able to have a variable resistor uh, which adjusts itself to the output uh, load current and the uh, required output power then you have actually done the whole thing of building a nice uh, voltage regulator right. So, this is uh, the most important uh, take away from this. We also mentioned about the fact that uh, there are what are known as charge pumps. Essentially uh, charge pump will uh, um, give you uh, some configurations of uh, where you do voltage multiplication. All of this means if you go back to your original our original idea of an embedded system uh, which has several things and one of the important things we said is the power supply you will see that one part is use of an LDO the other part seems to be that of a switching regulator right switching regulator and suddenly we have also introduced this term which is called a charge pump ok. Now, the question is ok we do not know much about this and this, but LDO is fine again you are confronted with the same problem as I mentioned in the starting of this course three options which one to choose right it, it goes back to the same problem. So, we let us discover slowly what this switching regulator does and then subsequently move on to this charge pump and then try and make comparisons between the three of them and then come to a conclusion that yes for this application perhaps LDO is the right choice and for another application it is a, a switching regulator or a charge pump ok. So, that is the key point all of this has led to a very important thing that we mentioned uh, uh, soon uh, a little late a, uh, a little earlier and that was with respect to um, either if you take LDO or switching regulator both of them need a voltage reference ok. If you want to do if you want to have a stable V out consider this as a box V in and you have V out for consistency let us assume that always V in is greater than V out ok. Uh, that is in other words you are doing a voltage regulation uh, by taking an higher input voltage and creating a lower generating a lower output voltage typically 5 volts to 3.3 or 3.3 to uh, 3.0 and things like that ok uh, so voltages like that. So, you can to be consistent let us also consider a switching regulator which takes higher input voltage and gives you a lower output voltage such a regulator can also be called the buck converter right buck converter. So, let us to be consistent let us take examples of both LDO and buck converter and both of them need this voltage reference right in order to do any sort of regulation or the output and why again let us go back to our basic uh, uh, let us go back to our very basic uh, circuit uh, block diagram I would say I would not go into great detail, but this time I will draw not the linear regulator, but I will draw the switching regulator. Let us go back to our starting point where we have a plus and a minus our usual error amplifier and we put back what I mentioned just now uh, we require a V reference this V reference obviously will have to be uh, used and each time you do a comparison the error, so essentially this is back to our error amplifier which is V out here you have R 1 you have R 2 and usual uh, comparison that happens between V ref and this uh, uh, feedback point which comes obviously this is the feedback right this so, so this is nothing but if you look at the block diagram of any switching regulator you will see that this is a feedback uh, point and uh, so now this is um, fine how does it go in the input side so let me just you know remove this and put it here uh, just for ensuring that we write a reasonably good circuit see the point really is basic you first get go to the basic idea 
okay switching regulator basic idea what is the basic idea basic idea is you energize energize and then deliver you energize and deliver keep energizing what do you energize you energize either a capacitor or an inner inductor remember both are possible okay so let us consider a case where we are going to energize an inductor okay how do you energize an inductor that is the next question so let us put an inductor here which requires to be energized okay now if this inductor has to be energized if this inductor has to be energized it has to be given a voltage right it has to store uh, energized um, the energy it has to store energy so obviously we will have to go back to our famous uh, series pass uh, circuit okay so now you see we got back the uh, the uh, the series pass element here and for as usual for uh, you know for continuity I continue to use an N MOS, N MOSFET, N channel MOSFET okay. and uh, so we will keep uh, the same thing here. Now what you need to do is something little bit different in this part, okay. in this part it is a little bit different. What you actually have is an oscillator, okay. I will call it by the block diagram and uh, this oscillator so let me move it a little bit so that we uh, uh, so let me just redraw for clarity purpose okay so just nothing but just redrawing it uh, okay this is an oscillator i have done something like this Oh, this should go you cannot have the line violating the basic way by which we draw a MOSFET. So, let me continue to keep it this way okay. this is the gate this is obviously the source and this is the drain because I have taken a um, n channel MOSFET for just for you know keeping things consistent across all our discussions. Okay, so, you can see now that um, unlike the, line, uh, the LDO where the output of the error amplifier directly drove the gate, here the gate is actually switched on and off and on and off. You can see that there is a switch here, right. This switch essentially connects and disconnects, disconnects and disconnects and therefore applies gate voltage or removes gate voltage and that is about it that is all that actually happens and that is why it is called a switching regulator. Every time the switch is closed assume that the switch is closed okay. what will happen the inductor gets energized and there is storage okay. there is storage on this device how does it store it goes in this path delivers also power to the load in the process. I will call this RL and goes to ground. Okay. Now, every time it opens, now you see you need this. Every time it opens, it circulates here, it circulates here, but when we say circulates, I have to be careful that it actually circulates like this again. In the one case it was doing an outside loop and in the other case it was doing an inner loop and um, because we had this diode uh, it was able to close the circuit and it was able to circulate the energy here deliver the load required power again back to this RL. First time RL got like this from this loop and the second time the RL got what was stored on this cap on this inductor into this load 
and again moment this inductor dropped its uh, storage came down its current uh, storage capability came down this switch opens uh, this uh, switch again uh, uh, closes and again delivers power to the load and again in the process also charges this inductor right. So, you see it is pretty pretty straightforward you store in the process of storing you also deliver uh, you know power to the load you open when you open you basically draw all the uh, current from the store stored current uh, the current that is stored in the uh, energy stored in the form of current in the inductor and deliver it to the load and then op uh, close it back and open it back open close open close right open close and again open close and so on. So, it goes goes on like this um, remember this point here okay this point continues to be a analog input sensing only it is an analog point right analog input analog sense you have analog sensing this analog sensing is uh, nicely uh, you know converted into a digital on off on off on off and so on. So, this transistor is switching like that right. So, essentially you are taking an analog input here and then converting it into a digital signal whose duty cycle is being controlled and such a block essentially is referred to as the pulse width modulator pulse width modulator block. So, if you ask what is the difference between a linear regulator and a switching regulator the presence of the PWM block essentially holds the key into this particular way, way of working. Let me draw a nice picture here um, to show you how uh, everything happens. So, I will put it here so that um, you know it is in line with um, you keep observing what actually happens in the system by some simple waveforms. Let us say the output voltage here that you require is 3.3 uh, I like this example right 3.3 volts as an example or some output voltage that you want. So, what actually happens is you will charge you will discharge you will charge you will discharge you will charge and so on you can see this. Oh, I am not so I am not being consistent. So, let me redraw uh, with some practice you should get some stability I will make it a little more steeper. So, that you actually see uh, what actually happens right and so on. Now, every time this guy is charging this up line is like presence of the uh, and on here okay it's like a one and you see here again it goes down um, this is going down and again you will see that uh, so this is going so 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 let me just uh, rub this out here and put it here so you see it goes down and again here it should switch on and again it should switch off here. So, if you want to uh, draw it nicely I will draw it nicely here uh, this width is like this then there is a very small width then there is a width here and this is coming down and then this is a larger width here right like this look at this on time ok. If you see I will make it a little more um, narrower ok and make this a little more wider. In other words what I am trying to show you is there is this T 1 time there is this T 2 and then there is this T 3. In other words 
three different times you can observe on times each of varying length right these three different are three different varying lengths. So, it is actually not like this anymore uh, it is not with a 50 percent duty cycle, but it is indeed with this kind of on times which are changing. Essentially this on times will change based on how this waveform will look right. If the output voltage remains very stable okay, <laughs> you can go back and re sketch this the you will almost see it is on like this and then very small time it is actually on. So, more or less it will remain uh, uh, you know uh, on for a very short time and off also for a extremely short time perhaps um, it will actually not even uh, uh, you know discharge and it is still able to deliver the current directly from the uh, from the inductor and therefore, it is um, not going to be very significant. In fact, ultimately you want you do not want anything to happen right you just want to remain um, you know in a sort of a straight line. Um, so, you can see that this is nothing but what uh, what actually happens with a um, with a buck converter which has a significant amount of ripple at the output there is a ripple at the output at the um, output ok. So, depending on what your embedded system would require um, you would either choose a linear LDO or a linear regulator like an LDO or a a buck converter like um, uh, the switching regulator such as the buck converter. What is the big summary of all this? The big summary of all this is that um, this switching regulator is a hybrid of analog and digital giving rise to a PWM block which is, um, which is quite a interesting block because it is um, I have not gone into the detail of this block, but indeed this block if you look at the inside of the block you will see that there will be a clock generator, then there will be a comparator ok. Then uh, you will have non overlapping uh, uh, clocks uh, digital uh, uh, driving circuits non overlapping uh, digital um, uh, drivers driving circuits. Okay, sawtooth generator, sawtooth uh, generator. You see this. This is actually coming from the fact that you are getting a switched output is actually coming from a sawtooth gen triangular, triangular wave generator, uh, and all that. So it's a, a fairly complex block which we will not go into detail. But the point is, it's actually used as part of the. Uh, as part of the uh, uh, as a important block of a, a switching regulator ok. So, um, all this brings us to what we discussed some time back about the response time ok, response time of the regulator. Now, you can see that if you take LDO simple few components few components no storage of any energy uh, kind of a thing oh by the way before I go into that I must tell you that I have shown you the one output capacitor this is a capacitor which is like a low it is for the it is a low pass filter basically ok. So, it is a low pass filter. Uh, we will elaborate that if time permits, but just uh, 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 for, the, for the sake of con co completeness assume that this is indeed a low pass uh, filter capacitor there, uh, capacitor for the purpose of uh, performing the function of a low pass filter. Um, so, coming back the response time of the regulator 
the LDO is simple with very few components and um, uh, very few components and has response times of the order of 0.25 microseconds to roughly 1 microsecond. It can be as so you can see that this is indeed uh, 1 megahertz right um, and down to 8 megahertz right uh, sorry is it 8. Uh, so, uh, so it is uh, it is uh, 0.5 is 2 megahertz and uh, 2 megahertz 4 megahertz sorry 4 megahertz I am sorry. Okay. So, it is switching at quite a high uh, um, and it is its response time indeed is uh, as high can be as high as 4 megahertz. Whereas, uh, the switching regulator the switching regulator switching regulator what about it? It is indeed quite sluggish you will get 8 to 2 to 8 microseconds of uh, response time. This is indeed a very important parameter that you have to look out when you look at the data sheet. Remember we are trying to design right you are trying to do a design and in that you are looking at a regulator block and you must look up the data sheet and what will you look out for. This is an important uh, data sheet uh, specification uh, which you may actually want to look up. So, that before you choose it you actually understand the response time. So, you see um, it is a it is a little um, you have to be very careful. Okay. So, that is the key point what, what we are trying to say. You have a power supply block which gives you our standard which we like a lot 3.3 volts and uh, you have a load. Okay. Uh, you have a load and um, the load requires 3.3 volts also for its functioning. It is insufficient if you just say that I have a 3.3 volt source I have a 3.3 volt load requirement I just connect two of them and take care of the power requirement. No that is incorrect you cannot be just connecting just because you have the required output voltage. You have to ask questions and you have to ask questions in a manner that makes your embedded system for the IoT application the, uh, the right one the right choice okay, the most optimal choice. So, it can be an LDO it can be a switching regulator it can also be uh, I mean when I say switching I mean buck uh, converter or it can also be a charge pump. Okay. We did not forget that we will come back. Uh, so, <laughs> which one again is the question right. So, that is the point. So, really uh, this is an important uh, parameter which uh, you have to look at you may want to consider the response time as one of the important uh, uh, requirements for uh, deciding uh, the kind of regulation uh, the, uh, the response time. Uh, the, the system requires. Uh, why? Why is this really a problem that is the really the question. Well, the point is that um, um, you know the, uh, the trouble really is that the regulator stability becomes important. When you talk about this response time regulators because this is a closed loop system with the negative feedback regulator stability is an important requirement. Okay, it has to be stable otherwise it would not do you any good by all this uh, negative feedback and ensuring that you do sensing and all of that. In other words uh, the regulators bandwidth bandwidth see we are slowly introducing terms for a regulator the regulators bandwidth must fall below the must fall below the uh, switching frequency and that is important by a decade let us call give it this number uh, f s w let us say uh, by about a decade or so. Okay, so, this is the most important thing it is bandwidth must fall below the switching uh, frequency by about a decade or so plus a number of components right. 
um, uh, which you need to do you have to put an inductor at the output number of components are more number of components are more right um, and therefore, that, that is perhaps uh, one of the reasons for this poor performance of the switching regulator because the bandwidth it is a band it is it is bandwidth is actually quite limited and uh, uh, one thing that you might occur to you is that why do not we increase the switching frequency. Okay? So, why not I increase this switching frequency what will happen if you increase the switching frequency direct bearing is that this will smoothen out right it will smoothen out and give you a nice uh, signal here at the output let me draw it for better clarity oh, sorry if it is really switching at high frequency you will almost get a constant DC with a little bit jagging, but you will almost get a constant DC. Uh, well you could right uh, what is wrong if you switch at a very high frequency that is not an option that is not an option not an option not an option to increase the switching frequency okay why because you will have this is an important point right switching losses switching losses can be high as a result it dissipates more battery it dissipates if you are if you are using it like a or with using battery here as an input source it um, reduces the operational lifetime of the battery dissipating dissipates more battery energy and reduces the lifetime okay so, you have to choose you have to check your uh, switching regulator and find out what is the frequency of uh, switching switching frequency you have to find out. Okay. So, and as you know it is not a bad assumption to make uh, talk about the battery at this stage because an IOT device obviously is going to be uh, not be connected to the um, you know AC mains anymore it is going to be a battery driven uh, system and obviously, uh, you have to consider the lifetime of the battery the operational lifetime of the battery the amount of uh, uh, times uh, uh, the you know because the cost of replacement is going to be very high we said this already. So, that is a very uh, critical uh, uh, problem. So, you cannot really go on increasing the switching frequency as in when you like uh, as much as you like. So, keep that in your mind. Now, let us switch to you know every time we talk about now you have a fairly good idea about the uh, uh, the linear re linear regulator and the switching regulator more or less from a block diagram perspective. It is easy to sort of uh, uh, you know think of several things several parameters that you may have to consider uh, when you start really looking at uh, choice of these uh, regulators. One of them is indeed the noise. So, so critical again it is a data sheet parameter see what actually happens is if you go back and look at this uh, uh, this switching device this switching device is the one that is delivering the power to the output right which means every time it is switching off and switching on it is indeed uh, delivering quite a bit of it is creating noise it is creating a certain amount of uh, noise and that noise is percolating all through the silicon on which the regulator actually is made. So, it is indeed um, a noise creating the fact that you have a, a, a regulator um, a pass element you have a pass element being switched being switched creates all the more problem. Whereas, with LDO there is uh, that problem does not exist right you have the uh, series pass element always conducting all the time here only you are trying to uh, switch the uh, gate uh, from the as from the output of the PWM signal 
Okay. So, you will have to live with more noise it has it is going to be more more noisy if it is a switching regulator and this is the cause for it. Okay. Now, this brings us to a very important uh, uh, thing that yes you are switching in one case you are switching the series pass in one case and you are keeping it on all the time on all the time only two cases exist obviously, you know that you have to associate this to the load dropout regulator and this to the buck converter. Brings us to a very important point about power conversion efficiency. Okay. So, look carefully at everything that we discussed now. If you take see see essentially if you take the uh, switching regulator okay, you take the switching regulator just consider this consider this or I will say consider consider switching regulator. What is actually happening? You can be as close as 10 to 100 milli volts between input and output as close as this. Okay. You compare this with consider now the LDO you will have 0 0.3 300 milli volts even up to about 2 volts depending on the type of LDO that you choose this differential can be high. Essentially the whole thing discussion about power conversion efficiency is about the input output differential okay. that is what ultimately it boils down to. Because the drop across the regulator is high the efficiency also is poor poor efficiency. And because the drop across the regulator is low, the efficiency is high in this case. That is all the high level view. Let us put down some simple expressions and see actually what it means. The uh, efficiency can be indicated as follows, right? You say P out by P in. This is nothing but the power delivered at the output to the power available at the input. This you can rewrite in simple terms, and uh, you can easily show, right? This is pretty trivial. Quite trivial in this case. Now where is this term coming from this is the loss power loss power loss how much will it be power loss if it is switching regulator is going to be so small so small right that the efficiency for switching regulators is going to be as high as anywhere from 80 to 95% this is the nice thing about the switching regulator. You can try by substituting input output values okay, quite trivial you will see that efficiency indeed is uh, can be as high as 80 to 95 uh, percent okay. and uh, if you take the uh, case of uh, the uh, LDO the efficiency can perhaps be again I will put back a very trivial uh, expression load current I will this time I express it in terms of uh, V i um, you have the re re reason for that is I want to bring in this ground current or the quiescent current which we mentioned last time right. And this term I load V out 
I load plus I ground V in has and will always be less than V out by V in. This is the theoretical efficiency that you can achieve which one maximum I will say ma no, not theoretical I would say maximum not theoretical I am sorry maximum possible efficiency is what V out by V in. Okay. Now, this term indeed is always less than this maximum possible um, uh, maximum possible efficiency. So, what is it it is all about? It is easy to see that efficiency improves with the lower input output differential right. So, big takeaway easy to see that efficiency efficiency improves with lower input output differentials many of the data sheet uh, characteristics uh, which are are often publicly available everything revolves around these kind of uh, understanding okay so um, that is very critical so now let's take uh, is a pretty trivial things right supposing you take input uh, of 5 volts okay and for simplicity and quick uh, computation i will take v out as 2.5 volts. You can see that you will get some efficiency I am sure you know how to calculate that. Now, consider that you take V in of 3.3 volts V in mind you for the same output right. You will see that if this differential is uh, so what is this let us put this down this is 50 percent right and this is uh, uh, 75 percent efficiency this is 75 percent. So, efficiency improves if the drop is low this is actually we made one important uh, assumption here this may we have made an assumption that I load okay, is much much greater than the quiescent current that is the most important thing. Okay. But, if you take IOT applications if you take IOT applications if you take IOT applications where you are uh, periodically sensing uh, in, uh, you know uh, sensing uh, uh, at some time and sleeping for most of the time where duty cycles are typically 1 percent and so on at that time when you shut down the regulator this I q starts becoming a dominant dominant number okay. it becomes a dominant number to worry about. Therefore, if you are looking at designs uh, designing your power supply do watch out for watch out for watch out for this quiescent current as well it will be no it will not be in any great comparison to I I load it would not be. But the fact is you are not going to use I load for longer time right it is the the, the IOT device often is in sleep mode and uh, as I mentioned the duty cycles are less than 1 percent. So, then this becomes start becoming a dominant number. So, please watch out in your choice of regulators uh, for this uh, quiescent current um, uh, system uh, an LDO which has the least amount of uh, quiescent uh, current. Uh, at that same time you still want to use these uh, regulators because they are less expensive they are less noisy. So, less expensive less expensive less noisy right these are all some of the major advantages. Uh, see 
you men we mentioned about this I load and this I Q this uh, um, load current right. So, one way what people actually try to do is they uh, they use multiple they use multiple LDOs okay, in their circuit in the circuit you can do that also because an LDO is a very small device. So, you do what is known as load splitting load splitting you do. So, that you get you continue to get uh, very good efficiencies from your um, uh, LDO uh, th that you have used. What it simply means is you have one power source you have one uh, power source and you want so let us say this is 5 volts and um, what you do is you use one LDO and connect a few loads and you take the same 5 volts which is available here. So, and uh, use another LDO and connect other loads to that this way let us say this is uh, 3 volts this is also 3 volts right. Um, uh, so, together together would have perhaps brought down the efficiency of the LDO this is also an LDO. So, I will say LDO and LDO together they would have brought the efficiency down, but uh, splitting them uh, with uh, you know splitting the uh, loads across load splitting when you try you may end up with better uh, you know end up with much better uh, uh, efficiency and also um, it may be optimal for the design. So, do consider not just by one, but maybe at times you may also want to choose uh, multiple of them. So, this is a important uh, aspect of the, uh, uh, the choice of the component. So, let us uh, sort of you know sometimes it is useful to uh, you know make a nice comparison between uh, linear regulators and switching regulator switched regulators ok. So, let us see linear regulators you must have V out less than V in this is true only for true for buck converters that is important ok very simple stuff right. So, that means in other words uh, you can say it is flexible in this case you can have V uh, V out greater than V in if it is a boost converter. So, really that is another thing this is really low cost and it is low noise the series pass is on all the time quick to respond. limited efficiency efficiency is poor right efficiency is uh, I would say um, yeah I think the right word indeed is uh, efficiency is um, is uh, restricted I would say. quick to respond efficiency and so on. You can put here noise is a important thing high noise ok not quick to respond we know these numbers efficiency is fantastic very good efficiency is re not really restricted it is very efficient high efficiency generally it can be even as high as 95 percent it cannot be less than 85 percent definitely greater than 95 percent ok. So, nice overview of uh, linear versus uh, switching uh, regulator see the if you look practically from a uh, from a systems uh, from a IOT systems uh, perspective. Uh, there is no choice there is absolutely no choice that you can have a system which has only LDOs 
or only switching uh, buck converters or boost converters or whatever may be the case. You have to coexist the system the IoT board the embedded system board for your IoT application has to coexist with both types of regulators. Now the most logical thing that you can actually think of in this uh, situation is uh, what can I do what, what is it and how do I uh, sort of mix match this uh, uh, you know lead, linear uh, regulators with switching regulators. Often your embedded system take, take it for me is going to be battery driven okay. If it is a slightly larger uh, embedded system like the kind of gateway boards that we mentioned you will have uh, the power coming from even a lead acid battery multiple lead acid batteries let us say. Um, so, let us take a case and I show you an example of how you can mix match these things in a manner that will actually come to our advantage ok. So, let us go back to the drawing board take a battery case ok and let us say this is the battery which gives you 24 volts alright. Now, let us say I am interested in generating 2.4 volts. So, I will uh, draw in simpler terms so that uh, in a much easier way I will what I will do is now here is my V in which is equal to 24 volts. So, I will rub this out this is a battery source ok. What I will do I will feed this to a buck converter ok and I will get 2.4 volts noisy lot of ripple lot of ripple out here and I will connect it to whatever loads that can tolerate this noisy and ripple ok. But then I will take this 2.4 and connect it now to an LDO and I will generate maybe I will generate uh, if it is 2.4 I will generate uh, 2.2 or I will even generate 1.8 volts for some loads. Okay. Now, what is R L 1 and R L 2 is the question right what kind of loads do I connect them. It is easy to say that anything in the digital domain which are essentially if you have on a clock rise on the rise of a clock edge on the rise of a clock edge uh, several parts of a digital circuit are switching on switching on then I think you could connect R L 1 could be all these digital loads ok laptops uh, then handhelds all of them which do not mind uh, essentially uh, which have a lot of ripple they do not mind because they can tolerate the uh, they are only looking for a logic level right. So, essentially and they all they are uh, they are basically working in low voltage they work in low voltage and they are switching at quite a high speed um, that they do not they have no problem about taking a noisy ripple uh, input. But if you now take an LDO RL2 is typical that you choose analog loads it could be sensors for instance right or um, uh, mainly sensors analog sensors for instance. Uh, these have that problem that they cannot tolerate uh, any noisy signal uh, the supply has indeed got to be extremely clean in terms of uh, uh, the uh, output. So, you will say accurate clean signal 
signal out uh, clean output clean output this is that 1.8 volts okay low ripple you can also add this low ripple as well right. So, clearly the advantage is that you will be able to mix match the whole system with uh, um, ok. So, let me just go a little long low, lower here yeah. So, you can see that this is what would actually happen in reality this is reality take this as a very important point in the design of your power supply block. Okay. Note one thing what is coming in here inside the LDO is very noisy lot of ripples and by magic you get a nice clean signal here clean DC output here whereas, here perhaps it is still swinging right. So, let us see how this is actually achieved and what parameters you should look for to get to a nice looking DC signal at the output of this ELDO. That means, there are parameters of choice that you have to look at which will actually give you this benefit of taking ripple input noisy and ripple input and generates a nice DC at the uh, output of the system. This is a very important uh, point ok. Now, <coughs> which means there is going to be integration. Now, let us also look at as I said a embedded the embedded system the embedded system you have no choice, but to drive it with a battery battery driven right it is going to be battery driven. Um, and um, if you look at the uh, let us say currents input current input current and output current ok. Let us just look at that why am I doing this I will I am driving an important point here input current is I in and output current is I out ok very simple right. Um, if you look at the uh, the linear regulator we did mention about the I q which is the quiescent uh, current q u i c q i e sorry q u i e c e and t let me rewrite it q u i e c e and t unfortunately the c and the e look the same so let me write it again q u i e c e and t quiescent quiescent current is also an important thing also called the ground current. So, some people use uh, quiescent current and some people talk about ground current. This is a non zero one this is indeed non zero right this is indeed uh, non zero and that is a very important thing. So, you have to look at this as I mentioned earlier as an important uh, parameter. Now, if you look at battery life battery life because we took the example of that battery. If you really look at uh, the battery life, um, so current efficiency is I out divided by I in this is I load current right which is nothing but and in the denominator is indeed I load plus I q and some people even say I ground. So, um, that is important, <coughs> but you see the main point we are trying to drive at 
in this uh, equation is number 1 is this is non-zero uh, you should be careful about how you interpret this i q that is the point we have to uh, uh, let us see what that actually means. Essentially it means uh, if your uh, load currents are high that is if I load is high is a pretty high number okay, that is the output load current is pretty high um, then lifetime is just dependent I mean battery lifetime is just dependent on on the load current okay. all right. So, it is just based on the um, load current, but if you are not really loading it all the time and um, the loads are off all the time and uh, the dominant thing is indeed the fact that the duty cycle is uh, uh, very small less than 1 percent then the ground current becomes important then the battery life then the battery lifetime is dependent. So, here in this case it is just dependent on I load and in this time it is dependent on I q. So, <laughs> here is where you should be careful. If you are having loads which are switching at uh, you have several events, several events where I q dominates then do not worry about I q at all. Uh, and if you have events where I load is very very small the number of times I load is actually coming up as compared to the time the node is sleeping I q is high then you will be driven by uh, you have to take this I q. Um, into uh, into account. Uh, so, you can calculate the lifetime of the battery as simply the ampere hour battery which is nothing but the capacity of the battery which is indicated in ampere hour uh, divided by the load current right the total current. It could be I load um, uh, essentially and it can also be uh, actually you should take the average of the I load or it can also be capacity uh, of the battery uh, in ampere hours divided by average of I load plus I q or nothing but the I quiescent uh, current. So, keep all this in mind when you um, choose the load dropout regulator. Uh, and make a choice between the uh, buck converter and the LDO with the factors that we discussed being quite uh, crucial. Um, you can actually perhaps imagine a nice little uh, picture of um, let us say I load okay, that is nothing but I load. Um, this is the maximum current okay, that is that, that is just assume a situation where the output of the LDO or the, uh, the uh, okay, so I should rewrite this it is always not to be good to be casual you have an output capacitor for stability and you have the I load which is R L uh, which is drawing I L right it is drawing I L it is drawing I L of current assume that it is either drawing I L or it is not drawing anything I load or nothing. Okay. You will find that uh, uh, if you now take the probability this is along the x axis now if you take the probability uh, of uh, the system. Uh, so, I start with 0 and I will perhaps go up to 1. You will find that uh, the time amount of time that the system actually spends 
drawing uh, let us say small amount of current is the highest hmm, and it actually drops like this right. This clearly indicates uh, that many devices actually do not take the maximum load current at all they seem to be spending a significant amount of time um, uh, in the idle condition. Okay. This is where I q becomes important the ground current becomes important this is also true in several things uh, that we might have done in our daily life right that is what we do also in our daily life you keep the phone uh, most of the time you do not get calls, but you charge your phone by the time it is uh, evening you will find that uh, your phone even though it has received one or two calls has actually drained from a fully charged phone to let us say 30 percent or 40 percent depending on the number of times the battery was charged um, uh, number of charge cycles the battery has undergone. So, this is a um, story which uh, which is uh, uh, something that you can really relate to your daily life clearly indicating that uh, the quiescent current or nothing but the ground currents have to be considered very carefully of the when you choose the low dropout regulator. Thank you very much.